it was one of uh, my lowest lowest because we had managed to build this very solid cohesive uh, thing that you know it was something that this, this is a place you can go people from different ethnic communities can sit they have a common agenda they have common problems and they have common solutions i was part of creating eh? it's like a small child, you raise it, you see it grow, you see it run. You, you know within a market you have, can find all communities within the republic. So it was a small, in a way, a small republic. And that time, the ethnicity was not there. You could not, you could not feel it, you could not sense it. And uh, come 2007, you couldn't sense that uh, these things were there. I don't know, I have never figured out, was that an illusion? How can people just turn overnight and something that you have taken so long to work on, you destroy it within two or three days? So that's what happened. It's not even the businesses. It's not the amount of money. It is the social capital. It was the, 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 the social fabric that we had woven. For me, that was the big thing. It is the cohesion. For me, I don't care. I also lost a lot of money in the market. People lost thousands. But that, for me, I don't, I don't take it. But for me, the social capital that we had invested for almost eight years was gone within, poof, within a, a matter of weeks. You know, it's not something that you are hearing of something that is far away. This is something happening live. It's happening to uh, people you know. So for me, that was, I think, one of my lowest moments. Even when the, the fire started, when the elections were announced, I was, we were still in the market. They were saying, Moturi, you can come. Mm -hmm. But the rest, now the Kikuyus, who, who are unwanted at that time, mm -hmm, can go and Kibaki can give them. Kibaki was the then president. Eh? We don't have a problem with you, but we have problems with the others. But what kind of problem? What happened at that time? We tried. We went everywhere. We were trying. Ezekiel and I were trying. But even the external forces now within Kibera, there's so much pressure. It became even now a matter of life and death. We were just worried about our own personal safety. My people now, the Kikuyu, eh? we are going now with Ezekiel to all this. They were looking at me at a sellout. Ezekiel the same. We couldn't even work together. And I remember there was a lot of pressure now from the ODM youth, there was also pressure from the Nubian community. They were saying we want to claim toy market was part of our land. Some people had even offered to pay off the guns, but uh, stupid enough, they were paid lots of money. But then another group would come in. We went to everywhere, we tried to solve, but uh, even Ezekiel was under a lot of pressure. When uh, the market was banned, when it was rebuilt, it was a free for all. People f came from all over Kibera, and at that time they used to say the population of Kibera was half a million. So it was a struggle, it was a scramble for toy market, mm, for people to get stalls. So even the market people had to align themselves with a certain group so that they can reclaim their stalls back. After things had cooled down a little bit, the market was reconstructed by a grant from the, I think it was uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I had a list of 800 people who were displaced. And uh, the problem at that time was also all these Kikuyus were evicted from the market and even from their houses within Kibera. It was that bad, so some of them used to sleep. So I was moving from my home one day. And uh, I found people at behind Adam Saket, the Shell petrol station. There were over 500 people behind the Shell petrol station. It was a very nice field. Eh? So I said, let's go see what's happening. So when I went there, it's when I realized uh, these 500 people were actually waiting for me to tell them what to do. I said, oh, shit. So it's when it hits you. So I was 33 at that time. And these are people who are older than you, who have got more money than you, who these are people you can call mother, father, these are people, and these are people sitting, waiting for you to provide a solution. We sat down where now the Woodley Market is. So we are still looking at what, where do we go? 
there's no way, there was no way of going back because all the stalls had been taken. So what do we do? And I didn't think something just clicked. Uh, Woodley Market was an open field. It was a park. And he realized, ching, ching, this can be a market. So he went to the ward manager. I asked him, can we just do temporarily trade here while we are trying to look for solutions? So the ward manager took me to the divisional manager. The divisional manager took me to City Hall. We saw the director of market. We saw the chief revenue officer. And I remember at that time I had a lot of money left from the campaign. Eh? Mm? I, used to be, I used to be on the payroll of somebody, <laughs> of a few people. So I had a lot of money. So everywhere I went, eh, I gave them something. And they agreed. So it said every week we shall be paying 50 shillings. You just put on the floor. You don't put structures. So the next thing I went, I bought chalk. I bought a tape. And we allocated stalls to the 800 traders. Uh, then what I realized is that a market is not a market without food. Mm -hmm. People come to the market because of, and the wholesalers were still taking things to toy market. We sat down with a group of uh, young men. Mm, these young men have a reputation. They have a reputation, mm, so you don't cross them. And I used to give them a thousand shillings every day. What they used to do at Adam's Arcade, they could wait for the lorries, the pickups which are bringing fruits, vegetables from up country, the wholesalers, and they would divert them and tell them this is the new market. So that's what happened. And within no time, within a month, mm -hmm. the market was operational, the market was running. And then that's when now the clothes, all these other businesses started coming in. Mm -hmm. So that was the part of it. It's a long story. <laughs> so the next thing I went, I did, I went to Equity Bank and we show them how we do within Mungano, this is our books, and they like the idea. And without any security, they gave us a credit line of 18 million shillings. All the traders got a loan of 30 without any capital. I negotiated, everybody got 30,000. And the system worked very well where we told them you don't have to bring your officers. We are the ones who are going to do the appraisals. We're doing the collection, the collection for you. In fact, not the actual physical collection. We'll be collecting the receipts for you. If there's a problem, somebody has not paid you, just call us. And uh, for within one year, we had managed to pay the entire 18 million shillings. And now all the traders could access individual loans from equity. The issue of tenure was still, um, we, you know, we were told to be there temporarily. But it's been temporary for the last, since 2008. I don't know, the last 10 years. We still continued working on the issue of uh, tenure. First was the council to recognize this is a market. So number one was to give us a market code. We managed to get a market code. So when we were paying the market fee, if each week we used to pay 50 shillings, they were giving us receipts written hawkers. We said we are not hawkers, this is a market. So we want our own receipts. They brought us new receipts written uh, Woodley market.